Let that soak into your spirit. Something must change in your relationship with a gift God gives you. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. Ephesians 4, 11. He said, and he gave, verse, sorry, verse 9. Let's start from verse 9. Now that he ascended, what is it that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all things, that he might fill all things. I think I've missed it. It's still coming back. It's verse 7 or 8. Verse 7. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. 8. Wherefore he said, when he ascended upon high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. That's why we have a conference we call He Gave Gifts Unto Men Conference. Yes. Because they are gifts. They are precious gifts. Wonderful men. And if you read verse, verse 11, he says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets. They said that he ascended and he gave gifts unto men. So you are men. <laughs> you are the men. And he has given you gifts. And he gave some gifts were apostles, some gifts were prophets, some gifts were evangelists, some gifts were pastors, and some gifts were teachers. That's what it means. So you may not think a pastor is a gift, but it's a gift. It is said that John Wesley was the gift to England eh, that France did not have. And that is why when they had the French Revolution, to borrow my professor's line of teaching a bit, you know, they had the French Revolution. <laughs> they slaughtered, they slaughtered people. They, they killed the leadership. They, they, they killed everyone there. They, they slaughtered. That's why they don't have a monarch. Like how England has King Charles III now. They would have had also... Um, can something 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 jack or shark or something yeah yeah louis the third those people they are french people but they slaughtered all of them and did away with all these type of monarchy kai you people who are in that castle the nonsense we are the workers and you are the people they slaughtered all of them but when that spirit was come and you see all of europe had that situation all the, of you if you go to europe you see cathedrals and castles everywhere not only in england and we're talking about buckingham palace and this type of uh, windsor and uh, Bamora. <laughs> we are hearing all these news. Some of you don't listen to news, so you don't know what we are talking about. Oh, they have castles there. There are also castles. I've visited some in Austria. Yes. And they had them there, but they slaughtered as the spirit of murder was walking through Europe. They slaughtered the monarchy and destroyed all that system of government and just left the, the the, the main system of government there for them and, and destroyed all those that would have been in the monarchy. By now they would have had King something the third, King something the fifteenth, uh, King something that is that, that they are all gone. And when the, the thing was coming towards England, John Wesley had gone through England with his Methodism. Yes. And preached the gospel on horseback and trained different different preachers local preachers and uh, lay preachers to also go from place to place and and form societies and preach there in circuits so they preach here preach here preach here preach here preach here preach here so by the time the spirit of murder and destruction was entering the place no the gospel had calmed the city the the whole nation was calm so they, 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 they credit John Wesley, they credit John Wesley with the peace that England enjoyed. So he's, 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 he has been canonized and revered in the, in the whole land. It's a gift that England did not have. What is a gift? That's why you may not know it. 
That's why today they have King Charles III. He doesn't, I don't know whether he is aware, but he may not even be aware. After many years and after knowing so many things have come and gone, you may think that the one through whom God brought peace to the land is not necessary for our system now. And that's what afflicts all of us who are Christians. We suffer from familiarity. Yes. The person who was great no longer is great. The person who was dear, he's no longer dear. Always criticism. And those of you on social media, you see, the more you watch social media, this man of God has done this, this man of God has done this, hey, hey, man of God, there they go again. Da, 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 da. Those type of stories, it's not about a man of God somewhere far away. It's calculated to reduce the, the sort of reverence you have for men of God, including one who has not been written about. All of it is calculated. The more there is dishonor for men of God, pastors. When you see pastors, a pastor does this. A pastor, don't read them. Don't watch them. Don't think about it. Forget about it. Don't, don't say, hey, but, hey, but if the men of God are doing wrong things, shouldn't they publicize them? If you like, continue. Not only them, but every man of God you ever come into contact with will have the same tag. They say, oh, there's no smoke without fire. Look, we can be here. There'll be smoke here. We cannot even breathe, but there'll be no fire here. Somebody's fire from far away can fill your house with smoke. It doesn't mean there's fire in your house. So if you always think that there's no smoke without fire, there's no smoke without fire, it's not also true. Yes. And there's even uh, exhaust fumes. Is the, the fire, you can't see fire, but you see smoke. Yeah. So, brothers and sisters, let's arm ourselves with this mind that God gives gifts and your ability to receive those gifts will make sure that you, 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 you attract the blessing and the prosperity and the advancement that comes from God through his servants. First Samuel chapter 12 and verse 6. First Samuel 12 verse 6. I'm preaching a very important message. Yeah. So when we talk about honoring a prophet, it's not that a time has come, oh, everybody go and bring something. Go, no, that's not the spirit. We, your spirit is wrong. If that's how you are looking at it. First Samuel chapter 12 verse 6. He says, And Samuel said unto the people. Listen to what he said to them. It is the Lord. Eh, that advanced Moses and Aaron. And that brought your fathers up out of the land of Egypt. <laughs> And he said to the people, it is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron and that brought your fathers up out of the land of Egypt. Hosea chapter 12, add this verse to Hosea chapter 12 verse 13. Yes. And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet was he preserved your preservation is coming your advancement is coming your prosperity is coming it's coming through the prophet god sends into your life hey marilyn hickey to borrow my prophet's line of ministration <laughs> was in a Braham meeting. Braham. Braham is a prophet. You know, there are people who are called Brahamites today, but they are, I don't think it's working like that. But he was a great prophet of the Lord. That he died tragically in an accident. Marilyn Hickey is an American preacher. She's a woman preacher. She was in the meeting. She had been married for many years without a child. And she herself recounts that when she was in the meeting and she was going for prayers, she said it was like an angel, almost as if you can hear the sound of an engine. Some kind of, it's like when Braham is ministering. 
It's like around and, and he was going. It's like some wind. B was almost like pushing her away. Abraham told her, go and have your child. She had one daughter. She became pregnant from that prophetic word. And that daughter, if you ever watched Marilyn Hickey's uh, programs, she always sits with her to do the program. That girl came from that prophetic word. She says it herself. Yeah. Buy a prophet. Buy a prophet. Buy a prophet. It is the Lord who advanced Moses and Aaron. So when he says that by a prophet, God brought up Israel out of Egypt. That's the prophet he's talking about. And that's the one God gave. And the Bible says God advanced him. It is the Lord. It is the Lord. Not a theological seminary. Not human appointment. Not an institution. Not a denomination. But it is the Lord who advanced Moses. So the prophet who is standing as a gift, he is from the Lord. He is of the Lord. And for you. <laughs> for you. So when you are here, you are in the ministry of the Macarius Church, which is a baby of Bishop Dagwood Mills. Yes. So we are laboring under his grace and under his unction. Oedipo calls it under this mandate. Yes. So everybody is under this mandate. And he takes it to the higher. On, on Sundays, there's no branch that meets on its own. All branches in and around Lagos, they all find their way to that Canaan land where the prophet of the Lord is interacting with the people of God and giving them the mind of God. They, 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 they honor him that way. They honor him that way. So let me show you some levels. I'll just list them for you. And then levels of honor. Because levels of honor helps you to, 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 to have the right heart and right mind. The first level of honor is when you are recognized. When you recognize the anointing. Recognize the anointing. If you recognize the anointing as the carpenter, you are not going to receive much from the carpenter. <laughs> hmm? If you recognize him as an old boy from Achimota school, classmate, you are not going to get much. Recognition, recognizing, recognizing. Do you see? But you see, you have to see the prophet. Yes. Jesus said, you will not see me or you shall not see me until you say that blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You have to recognize him as the one who has come in the name. Luke 13, 35. Behold, you, your house is left unto you desolate. And verily I say unto you, ye shall not see me. So when there's a prophet, there's an anointed person, you don't see that prophet. Not even that physical. You can't see him in manifestation. You can't see him in operation. He says, you can't see me until the time some come when you say, you shall say, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Until the time cometh when you shall say, Blessed is he that cometh. The person is coming in the name of the Lord. Receive him differently. If he's coming in the name of MTN, if he's coming in the name of Barclays Bank, if he's coming in the name of even the Macarius Church, it's different from when he's coming in the name of the Lord. That's when you start seeing the one whom God has given in a special way. Some people see the person, that, oh, he's far away. I don't see him physically here. So almost like once you are not around, you are not here. But when God gives you a gift, distance doesn't matter. Because in the spirit, there is no distance. The person can be in America, he can be a blessing to you. The person can be in Zimbabwe, he will be a blessing to you. The person can be far away, somewhere in another town in Ghana, he will still be a blessing to you. Always. Like I tell you of the pastor who is in Kumasi, he, he, he doesn't, I don't see me, he's in Kumasi, I'm in Accra. But every day, every week, I will hear from him. Hey, it's wonderful. May God bless him. Amen. May God anoint him. Amen. And advance him like he advanced Moses and Aaron. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Say amen. amen. Yeah. When you hear, we hear the Pope proclaiming blessings over his congregation, and you hear their response, you can see that they believe. They have recognized that this guy is coming in the name of the Lord. And this person that we see is not just a man of God or a, just a pastor who is just our pastor. He's not just our pastor. He is giving us things. So when he says that your level is changing, oh, he doesn't have to say it twice. But if I say your level is changing, it takes some of you about seven repetitions before you shout one feeble amen. And you don't understand spiritual things. So if I don't teach you, you will still be in darkness. And if I don't stress it and emphasize it, you will never know what it means to be connected to a gift God has given you in a man. Somebody is changing from today. Somebody is changing from. So recognize. All right. In 2 Kings chapter 3, the story is long, but you can read it from verse 5. You read how um, Elisha was called by King Jehoram, the son of Ahab. He was in trouble. He had called three kings together and some other nations had also come to come and fight him. So, this king called Elisha to come and prophesy and help them to overcome in their battle. Is it they, they knew in those days that Charlie, if I'm going to battle, I need a prophet. Yes. <laughs> if I'm confronted with any enemy of my life, I need a prophet. Now you, when you are confronted with a job, you don't call your prophet. When you are confronted with a travel, you don't call your prophet. When you have marital problems, you don't say, he doesn't have any input to make in my life. I will sort out myself. That makes a difference. So when he came to the place, eh, he saw Jehoshaphat sitting on his throne. Hmm? He said, here is Elisha who pours water on Elijah's hands. Then when he came, he said, the word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. So they came. They respect the man of God. Not that he should come to us. He has come, but they went down to him. They took a, They got up and they went to him. Yes, that's honor. The record, you see, recognition is one thing. Recognition. Some of us, our eyes are not yet open to see anointing and anointed people. But it's opening from today in Jesus' name. Elisha said to the king of Israel, that's Jehoram, he said, what have I to do with you? What have I got to do with you? This is the, the child of, <laughs> the child of, uh, what's his name? Ah, Ahab. Ahab was the king in the days of Elijah, if you remember. So when he said, what have I to do with thee? Hey, he was addressing the king, you must see that he's powerful. That's why he can even address a king, what have I to do with thee? Get thee to the prophets of thy father and to the prophets of thy mother. Yes. And the king of Israel said unto him, Nay, for the Lord had called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. Like he, Jehoshaphat, and the king of Edom were to be delivered to the king of Moab. And Elisha said, As the Lord of hosts liveth, before whom I stand, surely were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, eh, the king of Judah, eh, I would not look toward thee, nor see thee. So, when you don't look toward a prophet, and you don't see him as coming in the name of the Lord, you see, you are in this bracket. It's like, you don't, he, it's like, I, were it not that I regard, which means I honor the presence of Jehoshaphat. That's why I'm looking at you people. But if it wasn't for Jehoshaphat, eh, I won't regard. Uh, that means I will not honor you. I won't look in your direction. I will not recognize you as even a person, like a person who is sitting down as a king of Israel. I don't recognize you. Only because of Jehoshaphat that I can see you now. <laughs> Too powerful. So when you don't look, 
your eyes are not trained towards the direction of an anointed person, you don't get, you, 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 don't, you don't regard. See, there's honor that is recognition. I don't regard you. I don't look in your direction. I don't, um, it's regarder, is it French? It means what? Look to see. Regarder. So it's a kind of regard. If I, I, I was not that I regard Jehoshaphat, I would not look this way. It's like if I'm coming here and you are sitting here, eh? then I lift my head after. Because I don't want to look at these people, eh? these, all these guys. It's like who are these guys? But because I regard the presence of this bishop as so, I can look here. Because when I'm coming, I, I, I want to look, I want to see him. And I, oh, I see you too. Okay, okay, you are also here. But if it wasn't for him, this area, eh, I won't look here. Because it's like when I see Jehoshaphat, he's not somebody that I regard. I, if I see Jehoram, he's not somebody that I regard. And some of you have that posture towards even the founder of this ministry. You don't look in his direction. That's why when we have flow prayers and we are praying on Tuesdays, you don't, you don't look there. But you are joining prof, uh, 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 Prophet Elvis. Alpha hour. And you are sharing. Yes. And even after, you watch after and pray with it after. You call yourself an Alpharian. Yes. I'm showing you something. And there's nothing wrong with joining Elvis's prayers. You should, have you joined it before? There's nothing wrong with joining it. But if God has given you a gift and you don't regard that gift, you'll be surprised that even joining Elvis doesn't bring you a blessing. Because you don't know how to connect. You are just connecting based on something that is not real. But you don't even know it. You don't even know it. Yeah. You have joined Eze. Eze. Pastor Eze. N-S-P-P-D. What God cannot do does not exist. Yeah. And you've never joined flow. And when you join flow, it's not your type of prayers. It's not your type of whatever. I rather prefer this. So you are like a little child who doesn't like the mother's food, but likes the toffee and things that the uncle is giving. So you don't know that it's not working for you, but you, you think it's working for you. Well, that's what you are interested in. And what you are interested in is not good for your health, but you don't even know it. You don't even know it. But your mother's food, your mother's breast, your mother's watch, your mother's Tom Brown, your mother's food, that is what is good for you. That's what God has prepared for you. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with joining Eze. But there's something wrong when your father and your prophet, whom God has given you regularly for years, is calling you for prayer and you will not join it. Yes. There was a church one day they, they, they had a visiting preacher. And some people in the church came together and said, oh, this man of God is being good to us. He ministers nicely. Let's buy him a Toyota Land Cruiser. So they organized themselves and bought a Toyota Land Cruiser for the, past, the, the, the visiting, visiting preacher. And the pastor was not happy. And you may say, oh, he's jealous. How can he, how can he uh, be this thing? Why? We have bought a car for the man. Why is he jealous? Why is he jealous over him? Oh, this type of jealousy is not of the spirit. After he has been preaching nicely in our church and we are bought my car, why are you people jealous? He, he, he is not jealous. But you are out of order. That's what it is. You have, you have, you have misplaced priorities. Yes. You are in error. You are in a spiritual error. And he's trying to correct it. It's not jealousy. Because the man who has been with you for 12 years, 13 years, 25 years, he has not been bought even a bicycle in his honor. 
but the visiting preacher that he brought that he invited that he introduced to his members is not the one that you are ganging up to buy a four wheel drive you are out of order you are out of order We didn't, we didn't know that you know how to buy Land Cruiser. And you are telling me that this man of God who has been with you for all these tw- uh, 15 years and so on, he, de- he doesn't deserve for he drive. But the one who has come after two ministrations of two hours, two hours each, four hours in your life, you are buying a Land Cruiser. You are out of order. You are, you are demonstrating that the one who is with you, you don't really honor. But the one who is somewhere and has come, he deserves honor. That's why he says that that prophet, eh, he has honor in your house. But your own prophet is, doesn't have honor. Because the Bible says the prophet is not without honor except in his own house. And you have proved it true. Some of you are wiring money. When you are on SS prayer this day, you are wiring money. When you are on Elvis' program, but you are never putting offering on flow prayers. When we call for Ben MP, it's almost like, oh, they are worrying us. They are whatever. And it shows in your attitude. It shows in your giving. And it must be corrected. It's not good for you when you don't honor the gift that God has given to you. It's, it's not good for you. It's not good for you. When I go to my friend Ben Pass Church, I make him great in their eyes. I show them that he's the greatest gift God gives to them. Yeah. He doesn't joke with me at all. Yes. He doesn't joke with me at all. His wife's birthday was last week when I went to the place. They were four chairs on the high table one for his wife one for himself and nobody on the other one then he ushered me straight to come and sit by him that's recognition he asked me some months ago is, is this 2020 uh, is that your 60th birthday I said no it's 2023 he says we have to prepare he said yeah okay very good we have to prepare it's like one year in advance his mind is thinking that this person if it's his 60th birthday i cannot just give one of the things i just have i must prepare for it so that i can do it well when they say you should honor your father and your mother you, you give your mother change and your father change like what else should we do we give you money all the time and how much are you giving 500 500 now do you understand spiritual things well if you have to honor your father, your, you have to prepare. My father, yeah. my mother, prepare. I have to prepare. Sometimes you say, oh, it's my mother's uh, 70th birthday. No, 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 no. You are renting mama, miss. This time, dear, you are renting you. We have to prepare. So towards the 70th, you buy land. You start building. Because this time, the honor is not just a rent advance of 20,000. We are not going to rent again in a compound house for our mother and our father. No, 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 no. We are taking them to their own place. They've looked after us. We have our own house. They don't live in their own house. We are going to change their situation. And then on the 70th or the 60th, whatever year it is, honorably honor your father and your mother with preparation. Not just, refuse. That's why we set up a date and set it aside and say, let us prepare ourselves and honor a prophet that God has given to us. Honor him properly. There are people in your churches, you are listening to me, you never honor your pastor, your man of God.
Because one tears here. We have to teach it so that you will learn and then you, you will be able to appreciate it. Don't squeeze your face if somebody is being honored. When you don't learn to honor, I will give you first, uh, 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 first Samuel chapter 2 verse 30. I'll give you that verse as your memory verse. You will hear God speaking how if you don't honor him, he will not honor you too. And that is why many of us don't have honor from our children and don't have honor from our wives and don't have honor from our siblings and don't have honor from anywhere because you don't know how to honor people. In 1 Samuel 2.30 he says, Wherefore the Lord of God of Israel said, I said indeed that thy house and thy father's house, this is the A part, should be before me forever, should walk before me forever, but now the Lord saith, be it far from me. For them that honor me, huh? I can't hear you. Them that honor me, I will honor. I will say to you that honor begets honor. Yeah. If you don't learn it, you are shooting yourself in the foot. One day when you yourself deserve a certain honor, it will never be given to you. Let me give you one last point and then I finish. Are you there still or you've gone home? Wow. Beautiful. The next one is to receive his words. Yes. Beautiful. That's it. You honor. A level of honor. I want to give you that one. Is to pay attention to his words. You have to pay attention to the words of an anointed person. Are you there or you've gone home? I, I, don't, I don't feel you here. You pay attention to his words. Say amen. amen. My son, Proverbs 420, attend to my words. You see, there is a level of honor that is associated with the words of the person. Remember, the people said, you know, uh, what mighty works are these? From whence had this man these words? <laughs> and what wisdom is this? which is given unto him. Yes, has these things. And what wisdom is this which is given unto him? That such mighty works. So he began to teach and many hearing him. When they were hearing him, that is when they saw that, ah, this person has powerful words and he has powerful works. When you honor someone, you pay attention. That's why the father is saying to the son, my son, my son, my daughter. Some of you, when we don't say daughter, you think it's not you. My daughter. Attend to my words. Incline your ear. Incline. Incline is a mathematical word, actually. Angle of inclination. Yes, angle of inclination. Gradient. Have you remember gradient? Uh -huh. Gradient and then angle of inclination. It's like the thing is inclined. Inclined means that it's tilted. And the angle at which it's tilted is the angle of inclination. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Yes. Angle of inclination. Yeah. It's an angle. So when he says incline your ear to my say it means that Tilt your ear in the direction of my words. It's like make a conscious effort and direct your ears towards where my words are coming from. If you honor me, incline, incline, incline. Look, when you are listening to radio, eh, like some of you are watching on, listening on Sweet Melodies or watching on Facebook, it is by chance. You've just chanced upon me. Or you just, oh, I, no, when I, the thing is on sweet melody, so I always hear some preacher be preaching at this time. So let, uh, put it there, put it there, put it there. Yes, even that is a start of inclination. But when you are on radio and somebody is preaching, you are not inclining your ear. It's just in the atmosphere you are listening to it. But incline, it means that you must make an effort 
You see, his, his voice is coming from this direction. Eh? Make an effort and go and hear what he's saying. Attend to my words. It means that stay by my words. Focus on my words. Attend. Attend. <laughs> hear, listen. Stay there. Stop. Don't go. Don't move. When you get my words, stay by my words. And then incline your ears. Like, what is he saying? So, even that, even sometimes we can be listening to a message and the recording is not clear. But Charlie, you are tuning in. Then you, you, you change the tone. You change the settings. You look for the equalizer. You increase the high. And you re- reduce the mid. And, and remove, reduce the low. So that the bass is not too much. And the low is not too much. And the high is higher. So that the voice can be shrill. So that you can hear. It can pierce through the hum in the background. So you can hear the worst word. You are inclining. Inclining. Yeah, it's like you are, you are, you are, you are making a, an effort. That's why when your mother is talking to you and you're looking somewhere, they'll beat your back. Bam! He said, ah, but I'm listening to you. No, 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 no. He wants you to tilt your ears in her, her direction and your eyes on her. Where the things coming from your eyes. And they say, oh, now someone, it's not just come bring some hundred. Oh. If you don't keep your money, it can turn into worms as you are giving it. Person's words don't mean anything. If you are quarreling with your wife and I come and speak, will it mean anything? Will it change anything? When you honor somebody, it must change something. Yeah. One day a pastor, you know, something, something with his wife. Then his pastor called him. When his pastor called him, he said, oh, how are you? Fine. How is the house? It's not easy here. We haven't spoken for two, three weeks or something, there was some psycho, you know, this type of cold water that, well, it happens, so, <laughs> it doesn't happen, and I will wait me happy, oh, no. <laughs> it's normal, oh. it's not normal, it's abnormal, yes, you see, my word, too, I'm saying it's abnormal, and you are saying it's normal, so, my word should super, be superimposed on what you think are, it's normal to have cold water, we don't talk, my pastor says it's not normal, so we should talk. That's what it means. So you know what the pastor said this time? The pastor said to the, the brother, he didn't talk to the wife. Oh. He said, go and have sex with her by 5 o'clock. I mean, sex to yaya na na juni yaya no, but... You have not spoken. It's a mission impossible one. Because maybe you are even right. Because you are right, you are hoping that the other person will come and apologize. And the other person will not apologize. So it's like you too, you feel right and very correct. So you don't want the other person to to, to even come and you, ah, 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 um, 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 ah. But now they say go and have sex. Go and have sex is a. Hey. So I asked him, what did you do? He said, so I, 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 I did it. I had to do it. Why? Because my prophet, my pastor, said so. Very different. And if you honor someone, you, his words don't mean anything. That's not honor. You can bring 2,000 Ghana cities. You should keep your money. So honor is not the same as just go and find some hundred dollars and give it to the person. Ah. Ah. Who, 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 do you think if we, we, we are giving Bishop that money, do you think that if, ah, he needs your money? Huh. You are joking. He went. He straightened his face. Hello. Then you see, when they feel that you are now coming to apologize, then they will make themselves as though they can't hear you are talking. 
Sometimes that attitude there is the one that makes it difficult to resolve things. Not even the words that are spoken, but the attitude. Right. Uh-huh. Yes. Yes, then she'll be going about her own duties and as though you are not around. Uh, 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 I'm, 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 I'm talking to you. Yeah, I'm listening. They won't look at you as so I'm, I'm listening. Then, oh, uh, my, you are Elisha. They'll be looking somewhere and then I'm listening. Then you say, oh, I'm sorry for what has happened. Sorry for what? Hey! What are you apologizing for? Which of the things are you apologizing? It's not that you are apologizing, only that they have sent you and there's somebody you honor and there's somebody you revere and there's somebody you respect who has given you an instruction and because you are attending to his words, you are also acting on it. Now why your body language be oh my apology no so yes simple. Oh yeah, no, I'm gonna apologize. Nam the channel. Forgive him. Then he will do it again. So he likes that thing. So I want to know exactly what he's apologizing for. Hey, which of the things? Which of them? Then that you have to not think because you now nah, you didn't you you didn't see anything you were wrong about. I just want us to forget about everything. Forget what? Yeah, we can forget, but there are issues we have to deal with. Okay. I mean, the last time you said, you said, you said. Um, you, 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 I'm sorry. Eh? It's okay. I'm sorry for everything. You, whatever I've done, eh? I forgive you. You won't say your own. Hmm. Okay, okay. Three o'clock, 3 p.m. He looks at the clock. He looks at the, the person he has apologized to, whose body language is like, I don't want this apology. I want to stretch you small so that you now you see Pepe next time you won't do something to kind of apologize again. Nonsense. <laughs> hey! 4 p.m. So now he has to say, hey, so um, Frida, you know, I was thinking that the children know, you were saying that we should cut their hair, isn't it? I think we should go ahead. Oh, eh? What, what has made you change your mind? Hey, wonders will never end. Then, one said, and then you go and then you tap her small, then you tap her buttocks. Ah, why are you touching somebody's, somebody's somewhere? Why are you touching somebody's somewhere? Ah, who told you somebody somewhere? It's my own something. Since when it become your own something? Don't worry me. 425. I felt to say, God, no, say, oh, yeah, the five, just hold and Charlie, maybe I check and patch on your back. She may not know that you are moving by target. Why? Because somebody you respect has spoken in your life and you are changed. Changed. From the angle of inclination, the instruction that has come is by five o'clock. Mission accomplished. So happy. He's not, he wants to receive the call quickly. He wants to make a call quickly. Crane, 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 crane. Say, yeah, hello, hello, yeah. What is it? Please, mission accomplished. Before five, I've done it. That's the difference. That's the difference. You are moving with an unbeliever. Hey, one of our, our ladies was, oh my time. One of our ladies was thanking me the other day. And when she was thanking me, I told her, hey, whoa, 
Kenya Mia, and I mentioned some unbelievers' name. See, Bishop Opesa, Opesa. We saw one called Farman. I had because now she's married with twins, she has given birth to three children. And he says, Because there was an unbeliever in her life. And I said, no way for this guy is going to just misuse you. Don't mind him. Don't. Then one day I called the unbeliever to my house, my, my office. My office. When he came, I told him that you are worrying my daughter. He said, I know. Uh, yes, he knew. He knew. Because she has been resisting and, and you know their ways. He can call her and talk to her on the phone. She will become confused. Hey! And she will tell me everything too. And it saved her. Today she's thanking me for how I delivered her from the mouth of the lion. But you, you are moving with an unbeliever. We shouldn't know about it. We shouldn't even talk about it. When he drops you, he's coming for you. Who is that? Say, so, oh, it's a friend. A friend. A friend. A friend. A friend. Oh, you're a good friend because oh, you already that. It's already married. He has bought air conditioning in your apartment yeah. and everything, microwave, fridge, and your bed. So he also comes to enjoy it because the bed he bought, you know, he can't just let it go free of charge. He wants to test the viscosity. <laughs> hey, let's go home. <laughs>